Hey guys, I'm Eric at AeroGuard Flight Training Center and today in this video what I want to talk about is the altimeter. I want to dive into a little bit of how it works and then talk a little bit about altimetry and setting the altimeter correctly and, and the value that that has. So to get us started, uh, I wanted to first take a look inside of an altimeter. Uh, so behind the face of the altimeter in the, in the back of the instrument there, um, it's a sealed case and ultimately inside what we're going to find is this, they, they typically call this like an aneroid or aneroid wafer or aneroid diaphragm. And the intention is this particular aneroid device uh, is just like what we would find in a barometer. It's, it's, it's an empty container uh, and this uh, material that it's made out of will ultimately always try to expand against uh, the atmosphere. And so then we put this static pressure from our static source in the case around this aneroid wafer uh, and that means then that the atmosphere around us is trying to squeeze that those aneroids closed, right? So as this aneroid uh, expands and contracts, that's ultimately what moves the dials on the face of the altimeter. So if we, if we climb to higher altitudes, for example, the air becomes less dense. When the air becomes less dense, it allows for these aneroids to continue to expand, and that would move the hands clockwise. Conversely, if we descended to a lower altitude, we know that the pressure of the air will become greater. If the pressure becomes greater, uh, or the density of the air becomes greater, that would squeeze these aneroid uh, wafers even smaller, and that means the, the hands would rotate counterclockwise, showing us a lower altitude. So, looking at the face of the altimeter, we see usually that there's three hands, for our purposes, uh, especially in the flight training world, uh, we rarely climb above 10,000 feet, so uh, we'll, we'll really focus mostly on these two, right? So this big, uh, kind of thick, short hand, and then the longer, skinny hand. And it basically reads kind of like a clock, right? Where uh, instead of this being hours, the short hand is thousands of feet. And instead of this being minutes, the longer hand is hundreds of feet. So in, in this example, we see that we'd be at about 1,500 feet uh, is, is our altitude. Okay, next I want to talk a little bit about different types of altitudes. The first one we call indicated altitude. Pretty straightforward. It's whatever uh, the instrument is telling us our altitude is. Uh, ideally, our indicated altitude and our true altitude are the same. That's our, our goal. Our true altitude is our altitude above uh, sea level. Uh, we call it mean sea level, or most people will define it, they'll just say MSL. Uh, and so that's our altitude above sea level, which is, we use that as our, our, our altitude that we're, we, we plot a, a course to fly to some place, just because that allows us to ensure that we're going to stay uh, away from any terrain or any other obstacles that might exist. Uh, another altitude is known as absolute altitude. This refers to, or this is our altitude above the ground, right? So uh, we commonly refer to that as AGL. Uh, this is not something we necessarily read on our altimeter, but obviously uh, while we're flying, we, we want to make sure that we're staying safe distances above any obstacles. Uh, and so uh, in some regard, we use AGL uh, to, to help identify where we're supposed to be, and we can just sort of translate it to a true altitude and then hopefully read that uh, as an indicated altitude. Okay, so next what I want to do is jump over and talk a little bit about setting the altimeter and sort of why we do it and what value it has for us. So what I've done is put together a scenario that we're going to use to better understand how the altimeter setting works uh, inside uh, with the altimeter. So in this particular scenario, we're going to assume that we're going to fly our airplane uh, from point A to point B. 
And over point A, we will ensure that the altimeter is set correctly for the current uh, pressure there. So the sea level pressure or the, the altimeter setting in point A is 3000, and that's what our altimeter is set to. And we're going to leave it set to 300 all the way across the entire flight. So in this example, uh, at the beginning, our altimeter is set correctly, which means then that our indicated altitude and our true altitude of 5,000 feet are, are both equal, right? So the altimeter is showing us 5,000 feet and we're actually 5,000 feet above mean sea level. Great. As we continue along the flight, the sea level pressure changes, right? So we notice that the appropriate altimeter setting by the time we get to point B is 2990. So now they're different, right? And that difference is going to result in our indicated altitude being different from our true altitude. So I want to figure out now how much different would it be in this case. So to, to understand that, we can assume then that, that uh, we'll make the assumption then that the altimeter is assuming that the, the, the pressure at sea level is 3000 because that's what we still have set in our altimeter which means then that it's it's not measuring our altitude above the actual sea level which I'm, I'm kind of indicating here with this black line but is instead indicating uh, that sea level is somewhere below that and we can kind of calculate how far below that by using a lapse rate right so we know especially at these lower altitudes there tends to be a lapse rate or change in pressure uh, that's pretty standard as we, as we change in altitude. And at these lower altitudes, that's approximately one inch of mercury per thousand feet. So if we apply that here, we have a difference of about 0.1, right? So if I multiply that 0.1 inch of mercury uh, by the, to this same equation, I'll, I'll find that there's about a hundred foot difference. So what does that translate to us in the airplane as we're flying? What that means then is, is this. We do a great job flying the airplane and fly it consistently at 5,000 feet indicated to us on our altimeter. But what that actually means then is our airplane doesn't remain at that true altitude. So even though our indicated altitude is consistently 5,000 feet the entire way, by the time we get to Point Bravo, we now see that uh, the altimeter still tells us that we're at 5,000 feet, but if we measured our actual altitude above mean sea level, we're about 100 feet off, and in this case, we're below, and therefore, we're actually at 4,900 feet. Uh, this would be, the opposite would be true if, if, if the opposite occurred in this scenario. So for example, if we had flown from a place that had a, an altimeter setting of 3000 to a place that had an altimeter setting of 3010, then we would have drawn this the other way. And our altimeter would have said 5,000 feet, but we would have actually been at 5,100 feet above sea level. As an example, we can use an FAA knowledge test question uh, to help us uh, practice with understanding this idea of altimetry. So the question I have as an example is, what effect does changing the altimeter from 2985 to 2915 have on the indicated altitude? And then there's three possible answers. Either it's a 700 foot decrease in indicated altitude, a 70 foot increase in indicated altitude, or a 700 foot increase in indicated altitude. So I have a few things here on the board that I want to go over. The question was about changing our altimeter setting from 2985 to 2915. So what I wanted to do is kind of put this to sort of a, an altitude example, right? If we assume that our airplane is here parked at a thousand feet, uh, let's say that's the field elevation of our airport or something to that effect, we're parked here. Uh, and we have our altimeter set to 2985. Let's say right now that is the correct altimeter setting. Okay, then our altimeter would read 1,000 feet, right? 
and that's because the pressure that we are at is, is approximately uh, a thousand feet above, so the pressure is uh, going to be about an inch below, right? Because that's our lapse rate. Uh, so let's do a little bit of review there. We know that we could calculate the difference after we reset the altimeter to 29.15. We know we can calculate what the altitude difference is here, and therefore uh, we would be able to know how much of a change it would be. We can do that because we have this standard lapse rate. Right? And the lapse rate tells us that for every 1,000 feet that we climb, we will lose about one inch of mercury. All right, so in this case, we can use that in reverse, right? I can say, okay, well, the difference between 2915 and 2985, that difference in pressure, right, is 85 minus 15, right? So it's 0.7 inches of mercury. If I apply that to the lapse rate of one inch of mercury per 1,000 feet, we could do a little bit of math. I kind of have that worked out already over here. So one inch of mercury per 1,000 feet, I'm trying to figure out how that they, they equate to 0.7 inches of mercury over what uh, altitude, what, what altitude would that mean? So to solve this, we simply cross multiply and what we end up with then is 1x, so just x, equals 0.7 times 1,000. So we'll know then that this difference is equivocal to 700 feet of altitude. All right, great. So now my question is, uh, if I changed my altimeter from 2985 to 2915, would this show on my altimeter as, as my altitude going down or my altitude going up, right? So I want to better understand uh, how it would impact. Well, 2915 is closer to my aircraft, which means I would be basically saying, well, if sea level was here, right, was here, and I measured all the way up to here, and that was 1,000 feet, great. But if I measured sea level or I set sea level to be here and measured up, that obviously is a lower altitude or a lower range. So uh, what that means then is this 700 feet it's going to show us uh, lower than where we would be at, right? So in this case, uh, if we go back to the possible answers, the answers were a 700 foot uh, decrease in indicated altitude, a 70 foot increase, or a 700 foot increase. And as we see uh, from the image here, we know that it would be a 700 foot decrease uh, in the indicated altitude. Good, so hopefully this has helped answer some of your questions in regard to the altimeter. And uh, we'll continue to make more videos just like this. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll be sure to continue to produce this content for you. You guys have a good one. We'll see you later. Bye.